Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Dick and I'm really excited to be sitting down here with Frank DeGeorge, our Chief Technology Officer, Partner, Manager of the Business Applications Technology Team. Frank, what do you do here at Impact? <laughs> I think you just said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think my role is, is a little unique where I, I have customer facing responsibilities but also uh, I, I manage and, and oversee teams for our, our internal processes and tech and some of the emerging tech that we're looking into. So it's fun. So the forward looking of where Impact's going, the technology, what our customers are looking for, you're managing all of that. Yeah, and, and a lot of that comes from the, the challenges that Impact has as a, as a fast growing company, not, not unlike many of our customers that, that we work with. So we bring new tech in, we research it, we put it in action, and then a lot of times that spawns um, teams to deliver that to our customers as a service. So it's it's good. It keeps us it keeps us going. It allows us to reflect on what we're doing right, what what, what we need improvements on, and, and what new what new platforms and tech can help us with that. Well, and why I was excited to sit down and talk to you. One of the biggest questions we get from our clients, from a marketing perspective, is how do I cross sell? I think that's probably a general challenge for most businesses in the world. And I know that Impact Networking does a really great job of cross-selling. It's an initiative for our company as well. And I wanted to just have you talk a little bit about when you look at technology and you look at marketing and you look at business, what are some of the um, strategies people are employing when it comes to a cross-selling standpoint? You know, it's, it's, <clears throat> it's good timing for that question because this year we put a, a renewed emphasis on making that, I don't want to say easier, but investing a lot into um, allowing our sales to cross-sell, our sales team to cross-sell. Um, we've rolled out updated CRMs, we've rolled out updated marketing automation, sales cadencing, a lot of content. So the, the reason why that's important is the key to proper cross-selling amongst any organization, I believe, is education uh, and educating your customers on topics that they're interested about. Uh, at Impact, we have so many different things that we, um, that we work with. And even just in the business applications team, there's, there's dozens of different things that we can do to help companies with. Um, it's about educating them on the challenges that they may or may not realize that they have, educating on, on some of the solutions to those challenges, uh, how, technology, how technology can be applied to address those challenges, but it's not just the tech, it's about partnering with an organization. So I would say uh, to do proper cross-selling, you need, you need content, mm -hmm. uh, you need eBooks, um, events, you need to put things out to your customers that are interested in, in them on, on your website. Um, all those things are important. Yeah, I mean, I, I firmly believe that people are online for two reasons. Either you're online to become entertained or you're online to become educated. And if you're online to become educated and we're looking at cross-selling, then it's things like eBooks, but it's building trust, right? Making sure that they see you as that authority for that product or service that you're trying to bring to them. They bring forward to them. Because maybe you're known for a product or a service that you successfully sold to them. You need to educate them on the fact that you can actually do these other things as well. well sure, right? I, I, I... 100% agree. I think reps get comfortable with their relationships, sales reps, yeah. and because you sold them one thing that they think they've earned the right to sell that customer a bunch of other things, and that's completely inaccurate. I think you, you can leverage those relationships, but unless you're providing some kind of value and educating other people, because I'm guessing that one contact that bought X is yeah. probably, may or may not even be involved in, in future sales amongst other services that, that you have to offer. Even at Impact, you know, the, the, the business applications is really in those various departments and yeah. understand those challenges that those departments and organizations have. Um, while something like cybersecurity or managed IT, there's not a lot of overlap in, in major decision making other than, you know, uh, up until you get to the executive level. Right. What I love about what you do with business applications and building apps, you know, thinking as a marketer and then thinking app development is you're really looking at different ways to connect and engage with a client. Like, so either that connection is from um, make it easier for you to buy things from me or communicate with me, or it helps on the back end, making it easier for me to operate my business. Right. And I think those two things come together when you think app development and marketing. Yeah, and, and those apps can even be used to provide educational content to your users on, on other types of services that, that you have in a non-biased way. Um, to, to your point, make it easier to do business with your organization, which is something we're working on as well. Um, again, we're not immune to the same challenges our customers right. have. Uh, but 
you know, I think over the last 18 months, two years, you know, obviously 2020, well, we've heard enough about pivoting and being agile with your business, right? Now, I believe businesses have some momentum and capitalizing on that momentum is key right now. Mm -hmm. And connecting with your customers via apps and marketing education, I believe now is that time to make the, those investments because if you're not, other competitors will. And I think um, with, the, with the way the economy is, seems to be going and um, providing that level of service to your, your customer from a experience standpoint using apps and marketing, um, I believe now is the time to do it. So totally, 100%. And you know, coming out of such a challenging year, I mean, most businesses now are looking for different ways to connect and engage their audience, leveraging technology than they ever have been before. Um, what do you, got any success stories? You got anything that you've seen you know, where clients have successfully approached the market differently and started cross-selling you know, different products and services? Um, yeah, you know, there we've um, we have a case study on our website for a transportation company that that uh, they do oversized freight, and um, they, in general, that business shrunk significantly in 2020. They engaged with us in mid 2019 to rebuild their app that their customers use to um, you know, view quotes, take quotes, place orders, and their business grew over 10 percent. And their, what's interesting is their inbound volume didn't change that much, which is significant because that means it actually grew because yeah. there was a, a 20, 30% reduction. Um, but they were able to convert a lot more of those just because it was easier for them to do business, right? They were going on, they were viewing it, they were taking the order, and they were automating a lot of, of processes that take a lot of time for their customers and themselves. So they were able to react quicker and um, book those orders. It's a, great, it's a great example of cross-selling and making it easier for people to buy. Well, what's interesting is they had their traditional market that they use, but this opened up new markets right. for new customers. So as far as cross-selling, it's a little bit of a stretch from new services, but it made it easier for them to do business. Okay, Frank. So in recap, you know, thinking about cross-selling and what's going on, I mean, it really, it starts with content. You mentioned uh, eBooks just being kind of longer form pieces of content, newsletters, sure. blogs, right? Um, Education, I think just educating people. If you're if you're known for this one thing, you should educate them that you're successful in this other yeah. aspect of your business. And I think that's that's hard to do in a non-biased way. So you got to put an extra emphasis about what are your customers trying to get from that content? Mm -hmm. How are you answering their questions? We actually put a huge event on and we'll continue doing that just for education. It's not a sales event. Um, Impact so, Optimize. <clears throat> yeah. August 2022. Next year, we Can't had to wait. postpone it this year, but uh, we'll be back next year. Awesome, awesome. And I think the last thing is, in general with everything, is it's about trust, right? We need to build trust with our current yeah. customers, trust with our employees, um, and trust with our prospects so that they see us as that that go-to organization to help solve their problems. Yeah, I, I think the key to all that is, is providing non-biased content that educates them on, on things that they're interested in researching. Um, by doing that, you're building trust. You're dropping the barrier, you're dropping um, you know, any sort of defense barriers that are up when they start reading stuff that is just educational. Awesome. Okay, so I got one more question before I let you go. I hear you're a pizza connoisseur. <laughs> That's what I hear. So are you are you thin crust or deep dish? I mean, I don't think you have to choose. You, you can have both. You could have both. Okay. Um, can you put pineapple on a pizza? No. No? No fruit at well, all? Well, you can. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is it Chicago or is it New York pizza? I like both of them. Riding the line on the pizza. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Frank. Thank Appreciate you. you coming in.